in the last stream, we were working mainly on our power setup, turboing our way through all of the different tiers of crystal, starting with Energized Steel and then Blazing Crystal and moving all the way up to the Nitro Crystal before unlocking the Watch of Flowing Time, which is now going to allow us to accelerate basically anything in the game. We're currently using that acceleration to make our power flowers even faster. And so we're currently generating over 100,000 EMC per second. And of course, the Watch of Flowing Time does have an EMC value. And so we can spend 135 million EMC to get a second one. And then with that second one, we can also get another dark matter pedestal, which it looks like I did not save to my tablet in the last episode. That is not a problem. They are fairly easy to make. And as soon as I make one, I should definitely do this so that going forward, we can just type in dark, pull out the pedestal, uh, click the little X there. And if we do this, this, and this, we should see the amount of EMC being generated go up even further. You'll see now we've basically doubled from 100,000 per second to 200,000 per second because we're now applying that effect twice. We've got two watches of flowing time that are both accelerating everything inside of this pink area, which is pretty great. We also have our reactor over here, which is capable of producing upwards of half a billion redstone flux per tick, which is just a staggering amount of redstone flux. And my plan for today's stream is going to be to try and get uh, at the very least to this tier five altar. And then after that, we can start looking at the next chapter of the quest book and start working with the FTB industrial contraptions mod. Now between streams, what I have gone ahead and done in preparation for this is I've moved the blood altar up by one block. So last episode, these were embedded in the ground. I've since moved it up and I've also added these blank runes at the corner here. These don't actually do anything. They're just there because I thought it looked better than just having nothing here like this. And so for the time being, I've thrown down a couple of blank runes to make it look a little bit nicer. And if we get our sanguine sentium, we can use this to kind of visualize the tier five altar. All we have to do is right click up here and you can see that this is where the tier five altar is going to go. It's pretty big and it does eat into our pathways quite a lot, but thankfully there's nothing that protrudes out of the ground with the tier five altar. And so we can quite safely just kind of walk all the way over all of the tier five runes. And so the only thing we don't currently have to make this happen are these four blocks on the corners. Those are hell forged blocks. We need four of them in total. Thankfully, I don't think this should be too difficult for us. I'm going to unvisualize here for the time being. In order to get these, we need to go through to the Endless Realm, which is a different dimension from Blood Magic, but it's acquired in kind of the same way as the Hidden Realm that we went to previously. To get there, we have to get first one of these Dusk Ritual Inscribers, and I do believe we need two of these because if we look at this recipe here for the uh, Ritual Diviner Dusk Edition, we do need two Inscription Tool Dusks. For these, we just need the Sapphires that we got in a previous episode, and so it should be a case of taking two of these. Each one of these is gonna require 2,000 life points in the Blood Altar. Thankfully, that's really not too bad. And boom, and boom, perfect. Okay, so that's basically everything. Let me type Ritual Diviner here. So we've got the initial tier, but we do need to make the upgraded version if we want to, uh, to make upgraded rituals. Now, I don't know. I, I think we can upgrade the one that we made previously, which is currently our backpack here. The only thing we're missing now is two demonic slates. So for that, it's just a case of taking two blank slates and uh, throwing those in here. These are gonna require a lot more life points than the inscription tools did. But as per usual, I think we should be fine on this. I think our altar downstairs is gonna give us more than enough of a buff to our sacrifices to get us the slates pretty quickly. Speaking of which though, I can't help but notice that my sacrificial knife is not lighting up. Oh, I see the reason for that is that the incense altar is now one block too far away from this altar. So if I do this, you'll see it's not glowing up again. That's because I'm now one block higher up than I was previously. If I go one block further down, this does now work. And so we can still use the, uh, the altar downstairs. It just means that whenever I'm making a sacrifice, I kind of have to stand here instead of standing here, which is completely fine. Uh, it still works from here. If I do this, the, uh, the life points still make their way into the altar, but uh, this is just one block too far away from where we actually want to be. Either way, there's our second demonic slate. And so in here, we should now have everything we need to upgrade our ritual diviner to a dusk ritual diviner. 
And with that, we should now be able to set up the structure to visit the endless realm. So just like before, what we want to do here is take our ritual diviner and then shift right click with it. And we are looking for the endless realm. That's the one, the pathway to the endless realm. And so what do we need for this? We're gonna need a few things. For one, we're going to need another uh, master ritual stone, this guy right here, which thankfully does have an EMC value. Unfortunately, we didn't save it previously. And so we are gonna have to do a little bit of crafting here that we did before. Thankfully, none of this is too difficult. Let me take this guy. And of course, let's, uh, we should be doing all of our crafting, of course, inside of the uh, arcane transmutation tablet at this point. But we hopefully can maybe just do something like this. We first need to make some standard ritual stones. As per usual, somewhat awkwardly, the um, the slates don't have an EMC value. And so we are going to have to make some of the blank slates again. That should be fine, though. We do have a fair number of speed runes in our altar now. And so especially getting the, um, the tier two runes that are required for this really shouldn't take us that long. The blank slates are made almost instantly. And then the reinforced slates are pretty quick. And then as soon as we have one set of ritual stones, which is just four reinforced slates, we can then EMC those and EMC the master ritual stones, and we should be good to go. Okay, so four reinforced slates later, we can go ahead and make the ritual stone, which just requires four... Oh, rose quartz tile, of course. I do remember doing this before. Uh, we should have polished rose quartz in here. We do indeed. And uh, if we just run that through our stone cutter over here, we can get the uh, rose quartz tiles. Don't think it really matters which one we go with there. We can then put those in here. And at that point, we should then finally be able to shift click this recipe in, throw it back in the middle, and then shift click this recipe in, throw it back in the middle. We'll take this one for now. And much like with the last setup, I don't really think it's going to matter too much where we put this, because I think we can basically tear it down as soon as we've got access to the realm, because once we have access to the realm, we can then just use our temp pad to get back and forth in the future. Now, I don't actually know if this... Sometimes the ritual stone doesn't go at the bottom of the ritual. Sometimes it's kind of in the middle. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and throw down a couple of uh, gravel here so we can place the ritual stone up here like that. And then uh, we'll go ahead and break the gravel. And now if we take our diviner, we should be able to uh, see... Oh, this does go at the bottom, <laughs> but that's fine. Uh, we should be able to see what we need. And I was hopeful that it would tell me what we need. I think if I check the book here, under rituals, it should tell me what we need to make this happen. It does. We need five water runes, five fire runes, 10 earth runes, 18 air runes, and then 31 dusk runes. So a total of 69 runes. Again, thankfully, because we have our ritual diviner here, we don't actually have to make the individual runes. All we have to do is just grab the ritual stones, like so, and then right click with the ritual diviner until the whole thing is complete. And then at that point, uh, if we check the book once again, we do need to have a weak activation crystal and we need to have uh, 150,000 life points inside of our blood network. So I do believe that the blood orb that we currently have should be able to do that. I assume so because we can't make the Archmage's blood orb until we have a tier five altar anyway. So I assume we can make that happen with the master blood orb. And so all we really need to do is um, get ourselves another weak activation crystal, which thankfully we already have. And at that point, it's just a case of checking in with our division sigil. And right now we've got 11,000 or just shy of life points in our network. And if we once again grab our highest tier blood orb, this guy right here, throw that into the altar like so, we can then do a little bit of sacrificing, of course, making sure that we're down on the lower level. And we'll keep sacrificing until we have at least 150,000 life points inside the network, at which point we should be able to use our weak activation crystal here on the master ritual stone to get us through to the endless realm. The Twitch chat is pointing out here that we could make a life stone now from Project E. This is a combination of the body stone and the soul stone. I don't know if we necessarily need both of these, like the soul stone heals players and the body stone restores hunger. I guess we don't really need the hunger because we're already being fed, but I guess it doesn't hurt to have it. Both of these don't look too difficult to make, especially if we're inside of our arcane transmutation table. This one is just sugar, lapis, and uh, bread matter. Lapis and sugar we both have. Let's just make sure that we put both of those into the arcane transmutation tablet so that going forward we can do things like this and then we'll just teach it and then as for the soul stone this is the one that we're really after we can throw that in and then this guy is like a combination of the two this restores both hunger and hearts to 
nearby players if it's on a pedestal. So if I take another Dark Matter pedestal, uh, apparently I don't need a pedestal. Apparently I can just um, like shift right click it maybe. No, oh, maybe not. Let me put it on a pedestal. If I put this, let's say here, and activate it. Then if I do this, look at that. We regenerate health just kind of passively. So we can kind of just sit here. And I, I, I think this effect might stack. Like if I take another one of these and I get another one of these life stones and I do this, this, and this, do they stack? Do I get twice as fast regeneration? I think so. I think that's coming in much, much quicker than it was a second ago. So if we do this, you know what, let's do, let's do a few more. Not that we necessarily need this much, but let's give it a go. If we go and we do, let's say one, two, three, and then we fill all of those up with more of these stones. I imagine we could also, if we wanted to really take this to the extreme, we could probably bring the, the watch of flowing time over here as well, and then use the watch of flowing time to accelerate the effects of the body stone. But yeah, look at that. We can, wow, <laughs> we can, uh, we can deposit into our blood network incredibly quickly now because we're just regenerating health so fast. That is fantastic. And look at that, we're over 150,000 life points inside of our network. And so now if I go and I right click onto this guy and a, a rush of energy flows through the ritual and boom, we have a somewhat less cool looking portal to the endless realm. So before we go through to the endless realm, one thing that I do think we should probably start to look at is this uh, armory section of the quest book. So far, we are right at the very beginning. We've just got diamond armor. But now that we've gone through the power mod, I think we can kind of get all the way up to this unobtainium armor. We did previously make some oldemodium. We made an oldemodium ingot by sanding down some lumium. The reason that we didn't go with vibranium or with unobtainium is because they both required some kind of crystal from power that we didn't have at the time but we do now have access to blazing crystals and as far as unobtainium is concerned we also have access to nitro crystals and so i think we can kind of somewhat quickly here work our way through all of these different armor sets to get to unobtainium the unfortunate part is that you do have to work your way through every single tier here the good news is that i think that's not going to be a problem at all so to upgrade from diamond to netherite we just need to get ourselves a smithing table the smithing table thankfully is incredibly easy for us to make in fact i think we might have one down somewhere i seem to remember getting one earlier in the series but you know what it's fine we'll put another one down let's say right about here and then we should have netherite available to us in our tablet we do indeed let's take a full stick let's take our diamond armor off our backs which is of course being repaired automatically by our repair talisman this guy right here which is why it's fully repaired and then we can do the helmet we can do the chest plate the leggings and the boots nice i'll throw the rest of this back away for now now, to upgrade it further, we need just gobber ingots. Then to upgrade after that, we need nether gobber ingots. And then after that, we need end gobber ingots. And if I'm not mistaken, we've already made the first two tiers. We've already got regular gobber ingots. Again, I'll take a stack. And we've already got the nether gobber ingots. And so it should just be a case of upcrafting kind of all of these with gobber ingots, then upcrafting them all with the nether gobber ingots and then after that the only thing we don't have is the end gobber ingots but i think all we should have to do there is again just make the one ingot and from there we can emc even more of them and then after the end gobber ingot it's just a case of going through the different taniums from the uh, the all the mods mod uh, the all the modium the uh, vibranium and the unobtainium and at that point, we kind of hit a, um, a hard stop because we're not getting into Draconic Evolution just yet. We have to work our way through FTB Industrial Contraptions before we get into Draconic Evolution over here. And so I think for the time being, we'll stop at the Unobtainium, but I think Unobtainium is gonna be more than good enough for us to survive over in the Endless Realm. So as far as the end gobber ingots are concerned, for these, we need two nether gobber ingots, easy enough, one end gobber glob and one chorus flower. So. The chorus flower, I think, seems fairly straightforward. I think the way that we're going to get this is via our botany pot. If we put a chorus fruit into the botany pot, we then have a 5% chance to get a chorus flower, which means after about 20 rolls, we should get one. As for the chorus fruit itself, we can get that with the alchemy table using an eye of ender. And so, uh, annoyingly, I've not put eyes of ender into the table yet. That is fine. Let's do this, and let's see if we've got at least one blaze powder. We do indeed. Let's take this. Let's quickly teach it over here and then let's quickly grab one back out and throw it over into the table nice and of course we can use our little pouch here to make this a fair bit faster 
fantastic. And then we do have uh, one or two hopper body pots up here, but uh, do I have, wait, do these have any MC value? These uh, nutrient bricks? They don't. Okay, so we are gonna have to keep this up if we wanna keep our uh, food coming in. Not that we really need it now that we've got the, uh, the body stones, but that's fine. Do we have any spare body pots? We do not. Do we have the uh, the ability to make more body pots? Also, we do not. That is fine. You know what? I'll temporarily steal this one because I'm fairly certain that they do have an EMC value. They do indeed. That's just going to make it so much easier than manually making more of these hopper body pots. And as you can see, we've got access to uh, a lot of them, <laughs> which is good. So uh, we'll replace that down right about here. Again, not that I think it matters too, too much, but just for consistency, let's do this and this. And then I think I also need to do this. Perfect. All right. While that does that, let's grab a chest. Let's throw that down and let's put the hopper body pot above it. Now for this to work, we do need end stone. And for end stone, I believe we can just right click cobblestone with glowstone dust. That is completely fine. If we take some cobblestone, throw it down, grab some glowstone, shift right click that on, we get end stone. Nice, pick that up. Throw it in over here with our chorus fruit like so and then that should start to grow it is indeed and if we give it a quick acceleration it's hopefully going to grow quite fast and then hopefully we're going to get the uh, the chorus flower now i guess what we could also do is we could maybe move this over to the uh, the watcher flowing time just to make it even faster we did just accelerate it with the pouch but that doesn't really last all that long if we did something like this with the exact same setup here it should just be passively faster although it doesn't appear no i think that is working it doesn't really look like it's working up here but i'm pretty sure it is working yeah we're getting chorus fruit pretty quick and of course we can kind of stack the effects by doing both of those and that should hopefully get us a chorus flower at some point in the not so distant future while we wait for them the end gobber glob we can make with nine of these end gobber globets and these are obsidian end stone demonite and a ghast tier the ghast tier could be the tricky bit use the scythe on an angel block to extract look at that perfect so let's have a look here do we have what it takes to make an angel block we do in fact do we already have an angel block i thought we'd already made this we haven't but that's fine this is very easy for us to make uh it's just sticks that we're missing it's uh, all the simple stuff that we've yet to put into our transmutation tablet let's try that one more time boom and boom nice and then we can go ahead and cite that real quick to get ourselves some ghast essence. I think that's all being collected by the absorption hopper. Not a problem though, we can take that, craft ourselves up a ghast here, fantastic. And then at that point, I think the only thing we're really missing is a demonic slate. I definitely should. Uh, also, where are we crafting this? We are crafting this inside the Hellfire Forge, of course. So I'll throw you in there. Uh, let me go and grab a rocky dirt. We'll put you in there as soon as we take out our orb. And then over here, let me quickly steal that end stone just so that I can do something like this and then grab some more of it. Well, uh, we don't really need to replace this. I think we've got enough here. Again, we can just teach both of these to the tablet, at which point we can uh, tear this down to uh, try and keep our base looking somewhat tidy, which um, <laughs> is maybe a bit of a, uh, a long gone conclusion at this point. But either way, uh, what are we missing? The end stone we can place in and then it is just obsidian, of course, which I think again, we do have uh, taught. We do. Nice, let's throw you in there. And over here is this done. Of course it's not Isaac because you've not done any sacrificing. I do think we could also potentially use the Watch of Flowing Time to speed up the uh, the rate at which the runes transform here as well. That could get a little risky, but I think it could be uh, could be a worthwhile investment at some point if we, uh, if we find ourselves doing a lot of blood altar work in the near future. And once that demonic slate is done, we can throw it in over in the Hellfire Forge. And it looks like we just need the one demon will in there. It might not need any at all actually. It didn't, fantastic. There's our globet, and so boom. And I would like to craft nine of those, please, into the crystal. Nice, and that should be everything for this guy. It is cool, all right, chat, we've done it. And so now we should be able to upgrade this to the end helmet version, and this to the end chest plate version, this to the end leggings version, and you guessed it, the end boots, cool. And so now, if we wanna go through the different, um, all the modium ingots here. The first one is, of course, just regular all the modium. I don't know if I EMC'd that. It looks like I didn't. That's not a problem, though. We do have more lumium available to us, and we, of course, still have our sandpaper from before, and so if we do something like this, 
We get all the modium, we can throw that in here, and then we can quickly go ahead and craft this up. Boom, boom, and, and boom. All right, cool. I'm not quite sure why that didn't work. Like the first time, whenever I shift click the recipe and it didn't work, but if I shift clicked it in a second time, it did work. No idea what the problem is there. But now we just need one vibranium and one uh, unobtainium because both of these do have an EMC value. So the vibranium is an endarium with a blazing crystal. Endarium, I'm fairly certain, is in here. It is indeed, uh, as are blazing crystals as well. And so we'll take you, we'll take you, we'll put the blazing crystal down, let's say right about here. And then we're gonna take this off to put this in. And if I drop this on here, uh, oh, did I do it the wrong way around? Is it the, uh, it might be the other way around actually. It might be the crystal here and the ingot there. It is indeed, perfect. And then we can throw that in there. That's all good to go. And then the final thing that we need is one Fluix Pearl and a Nitro Crystal. Can I make this? I might not be able to make this just yet because I think that the Fluix Crystals are gonna come, yeah, up here once we've got started with FTB Industrial Contraptions. And so I think for the time being, we are gonna have to make do with the Vibranium Armor. All right, I think this is gonna be good enough though. Uh, chat is right that we can go ahead and just drop it into the system so that if we need to, we can always get more of them in the future. Not that I intend to lose these, but uh, let's do this. And we should now have, I think, pretty good protection for the Endless Realm. So let me go ahead and uh, kind of dump a lot of the stuff that we have here into our tablet. Annoyingly, a lot of this stuff doesn't have any MC value. That's completely fine. We can drop most of that stuff just directly back into our system. And then let's head on through to the endless realm here. I guess there's also, um, actually, I didn't think about it. I guess we could also look at making the um, the sword as well real quick. You know what, let me do that. Let me quickly craft my uh, diamond sword here up through into an unobtainium sword. All right, so we've got a vibranium sword. This thing has 117 attack damage. I think that's perfect. And so Chet seems to be a little worried that we might die here, but here we are, we're in. Uh, now we do need more iron keys. Thankfully, the iron keys are EMCable and so, we really have as many of those as we like, 50,000, which is fantastic. We are looking, really, for just one of these. I think we need raw demon eye. I think this is what we're gonna find, and we can smelt that into Hellforged ingots. Once we have one, we do need to get four blocks, but we can just duplicate with the refined radiance. So I think we should be good to go here. Um, it is very dark, and there are a lot of mobs, but we can fly, which is good, and the mobs, I'm not that strong, so we should be okay here. Um, I don't necessarily think we need these. I will take the uh, saturated tower, just because that's always good to have. And I don't actually know where all the chests are gonna be. Not that it matters too much. This is kind of an endless maze, as the name suggests. Let's try not to get attacked by the endless horde of mobs. That would not be ideal. Uh, the Twitch chat might have been on uh, having a good idea when they told me to bring like, the body stone. That might not have been a terrible idea, actually. Uh, they do deal a lot of damage. Our armor is pretty good, but um, well, we did take quite a bit of damage just from that uh, that one zombie there. So let's um let's bear that in mind. But really here, it's just a case of of kind of going around, unfortunately, and and, and hoping that um let's open that and move back, and hoping that we find the thing that we're after. I uh, probably could have also done with bringing some kind of oh, I mean a text uh, could also do with bringing some kind of oh oh. I don't know what's attacking me. I died. <laughs> I got shot by a skeleton, gosh, dang it. Okay, right, this is um, more difficult than I thought. The good news is, is that we um, we got our stuff back, which is surprising. I thought we'd have lost it all when we died. Um, it, it didn't seem too bad. The body stone here, I think is, oops, that's not what I want to do. I think it is acquirable. We can pick this up and then if we go options, controls, key bindings, and we type in uh, project E and then you click category, I think, I think change mode might be it. Let me change that to like numpad five. If I press numpad five while holding it, it kind of turns on and off. Do I have to, um, I do wonder if that's not the way it works. It is a necklace as well. I wonder if just having that on me works. Okay, so it looks like the lifestone here works in a similar way to the uh, Swift Wolf's Rending Gale ring in that I can now activate it because I've got some Aethanalis fuel in my inventory. There are better ways of doing this that we'll look at in a second, but for now, that should give me the effect. Obviously, it's not gonna give me the stacked effect, but it should give me a pretty good effect. How, oh, this sod is great. Okay, perfect, right, good. In that case then, let me take my uh, my keys next to my sword, and I wonder if I can use these in my offhand. 
I cannot. That's unfortunate. Oh, that one, um, not allowed in there. Okay, that's fine. But uh, we can we can basically insta-kill these guys. And I think for the most part, we kind of just want to fly through and try our best to not fall to the ground. But try our best to just find <laughs> some raw demonite. It might take us a little while here, but I'm hopeful that it won't take us years. Okay, so this is one of the rooms that we found, and I think this has what we're after. So this room is just real tall. We came in a lot further down here at, uh, at the bottom right there. And then thankfully when you've got flight, it does make it a lot easier because we can just fly all the way up to the top. And right at the top here, behind these chests, we've got demonite. And so if I just go ahead and uh, alter mine that demonite there, I think that's kind of all that we need. That got us 18 raw demonite. Do I have my tempad on me? Of course I don't. That would be far... <laughs> too easy and so oh gosh to get back we're gonna have to find our way home which i think should be doable it should just be a case of following the open doors back but um this definitely would have been substantially easier had i kept my temp pad on me uh did i come in this way i did come in this way the tricky part as well of course is just not dying to these guys but i think this is the exit it is indeed and so if i just right click again on the uh the middle pedestal here that's gonna take us back and down here we should now be able to take the raw demonite and just smelt it. Do we have our furnace? We do indeed. Let's do something like this. Let's throw in really any kind of fuel. Uh, coal will work, like so. And of course, let's do one of these just to make it that little bit faster. That gets us one ingot. I guess we might as well smelt all of them, actually. Like, we do need to get uh, multiple blocks here. Unfortunately, no EMC value, but we can take all of the ingots that we have and we can duplicate them using the refined radiance. I don't think... We got enough for two blocks, which is good. I don't think we have... Oh, we do have a refined radiance over here. Look at that. Perfect. Okay, let's do a couple of these then. Let's get even more of the uh, Hellforged ingots. We need four blocks in total, which means we need 36 of these ingots, right? If we want to maximize this. And I think that we might just <laughs> have enough refined radiance to make that happen. Fantastic. So let's do something like this. Let's take four Hellforged blocks. And now we just need to upgrade the altar. To upgrade the altar, we are going to have to get 52 more of the uh, standard blood runes here. Again, unfortunately, no EMC value, but these are super easy. Stone, uh, the orb, and then blank slates. The blank slate is just the rocky dirt, and we've got loads of rocky dirt. It's EMCable, and thankfully, it's incredibly quick as well. And so, as so long as you don't put it down in the wrong place, like a fool, we can uh, hopefully very quickly do something like this and just get a lot of blank slates, enough to make the runes, and then we'll take the runes and embed them in the floor. All right, so we've got all of the runes down. That was easy enough. And now we need to place down the four Hellforged blocks, one in each of the corners. I did also downcraft one of these to get another Hellforged ingot. I used the last of our Refined Radiance because the Twitch chat is correct in that we do need to get another block of Hellforged ingots because if we want to make the next Blood Orb tier, which I believe is going to be required for us, for that, we need, you guessed it, another one of the Hellforge blocks. So if we go check now with our divination sigil, we should see that we have a tier five altar. Nice. And of course, going forward, we can uh, replace these blank runes with custom runes that are going to give us more capacity, more life points, more speed, whatever it is that we want. But for now, we can take this out. We should be able to look at getting the uh, next tier of blood orb, and that shouldn't be too difficult for us. We can also now look at turning iron into industrial grade metal using the, uh, the tier five altar that we have here. So if we just do something like this, that very quickly gets us industrial grade metal, which looks to be kind of the bedrock of FTB industrial contraptions. Real quick though, let me see if I can't get this blood orb. For it, we need 80,000 life points, which should be completely fine, especially with all of the uh, stones that we have here. Not gonna be a problem whatsoever. We're already at 42,000 there. And of course, all we have to do is uh, throw our master blood orb in there. Is my master blood orb in here? It is indeed. This is why I was crafting uh, the runes just a second ago let's do this and then whilst we're waiting for that to kind of absorb everything i'm going to go ahead and make even more of the refined radiance using the polished rose quartz the glowstone dust and the powdered obsidian and then we'll duplicate more of the hellforged ingots to get out of the block worth and then once the uh, altar is ready we can then upgrade that into the orb and a quick 19 refined radiance later we should as always be able to quickly craft up another block of Hellforged ingots. As per usual, we do want to have one extra just in case we want to make more going forward. I'll leave that in the system. And then how are we doing over here? Do we have... Oh, I don't know why I put it in. I'm a fool. There's me putting the 
life points into the blood orb. That's not what we need to do. We need the life points in the blood altar. This should be fine though. We don't have 80,000 capacity, but we regenerate life points so quickly that I think we can kind of just out speed the rate at which the Hellforge block uses life points. Like it's taking them out pretty quickly, but we can regenerate the life points in there so fast that I think there's no way that we end up running out of life points in here. And we should fairly quickly be able to get that uh, final Archmage's Blood Orb. All right, so now that's taken care of. Let's look at uh, this uh, project. He will help, right? Question mark. P.S. It won't. Quest line. So the first quest here is for Charged Surda Squat, which doesn't have any MC value, unfortunately. The way we make this is by using the Tesla coil from Create Crafts and Additions. This requires the Mechanical Crafter. So I think at this point, there's a few things we can do. The first thing we can do is kind of clear our inventory a little bit of all of the stuff that we're holding on to. The second thing, which is not really related to this, is um, we can replace this block of Eternalis fuel. Earlier, we did make a um, a Klein Star, right? We did. We, made, we went all the way up to the, the Magnum Star Ein, which is quite expensive. But if we take this, this thing can store EMC, I'm fairly certain. Uh, can I put this in here to store EMC? I can, and you'll see there that it kind of took a lot of EMC, but there is now 200 million EMC stored within inside of this Magnum Star Ein, and I'm fairly certain that going forward, our Swift Rolls Rending Ale and our Body Stone should just start to kind of pull EMC from that Magnum Star Ein, as opposed to us relying on having stuff in our inventory at all times. And on top of that, we can also kind of put this into its own slot as well and just forget about it. So we don't have to worry about accidentally throwing our it analysis fuel into the system and then later realizing that we don't have enough to actually uh, fly and falling into the void that would be bad but what i'm thinking over here is that at this point in time we really don't need this automation anymore as far as gravel sifting is concerned all the stuff we get from sifting gravel the zinc the copper the iron and the gold as well as the lapis and the coal all has an emc value and so i think that for the most part, we can kind of just pick all of this up and, and mostly just dump everything either into the system or into our transmutation tablet. The same goes for this uh, double chest here, which is going to be a bit of an awkward spill, but for the most part, it should just be a case of dumping everything from the chest into our colossal chest. And the reason that I'm doing this is that I kind of want to free up some space here. Now, we do still kind of need the crushing wheels, because the crushing wheels are used to make the powdered obsidian, which is used for making the refined radiance. So those are still somewhat useful going forward. But essentially what I'm thinking here is that we can use this space for our crafting wall. In fact, we could maybe even put it on the side somewhere, although I don't really want to build like out here. We could do with looking at maybe getting the second level to the base at some point, or maybe even moving the water wheels down or potentially replacing them all together with uh, some kind of boiler. But Essentially, if we want to make the Tesla coil here, we have to do that using mechanical crafting. And for that, we need 10 mechanical crafters. Uh, oh yeah, this is still making gravel. That's my bad chat. Let me uh, go ahead and get rid of this and this. Perfect. We don't really need the cobblestone generator either anymore, given that we have EMC for infinite cobblestone. But essentially, we need 10 of these mechanical crafters. Thankfully, the mechanical crafters themselves do have an EMC value. So to make these, we need a regular crafting table, which is fairly straightforward, at least it normally is. Let me do this and let me do this. And I will teach that, of course, to my table here. And then we also need a brass casing, which is a stripped log with some brass. Did I teach my system brass? I did not. Do we have any brass? We do, fantastic. Let's do a quick teach, like so. And then all we should have to do is grab some logs, strip them on the ground, and boom. Brass casing. Nice. The brass casing is EMCable. And so now we just need the electron tube. The electron tube just requires a iron plate. And the iron plate, of course, is very easily made over here with a quick kaplunk. Nice. And so then should be everything for the electron tube. And the electron tube should be everything for our first mechanical crafter. And thankfully, the mechanical crafter does have an EMC value. And so we can now make almost a million of them. So. The general idea here is that we have to put these down in this pattern. So we have three, three, one, three. So let's do three. Not like that. I don't want this one in here. But we'll do three. We'll do three. We'll do one. And we'll do three. Like so. Now, the way that we get chef power into this is via this guy. Like so. So as long as you have a cogwheel touching any one of any of the sides, 
all the rest of them will spin and everything will work nicely. From there, we can use the wrench to rotate the way these little arrows go. So you'll see these are both pointing in, this one points down, these point down, these all point down. We just want to make sure that these all eventually go to one final output chest. It doesn't necessarily have to be a chest. The item will go on the ground if there's no chest there. But now, if we want to do the craft, all we have to do is place these items into the wall. And so I do notice that we need two of those plates that we just made. And so let's quickly go and get two more of those. One and two. Those are going to go at the bottom here and here. We then also need one more of the electron tubes, which we should be able to grab out of here. We totally can. Boom. The next row up here requires two capacitors and one brass casing. Again, the brass casing, we've got infinite of now, not a problem at all. We'll throw that there. As far as the capacitors are concerned, they require a copper sheet, a zinc sheet, and a redstone torch. All of that should be very easy. Copper, we have, and again, we just need to kaplunk it. And then zinc, we also have, and you guessed it, we just need to kaplunk it. And so over here, let's do one and two. Nice. Unfortunately, neither of these... Oh, no, they do both have EMC values. Ignore me. Let me throw both of those in there. Let me also grab that redstone torch that I just made, and we'll throw that in here as well. That should be everything for the capacitor, which you guessed it, also has an EMC value. And then we can take two of those, drop them in here and here, at which point we're now just missing three copper spool and one andesite alloy. Andesite alloy we already have. It's in here. And the copper spool is made with four copper wire and an empty spool. The empty spool is two iron plates and an iron nugget. That... It's not a problem. Iron, we have. Let's take two. And I don't know if we've taught this nuggets yet. I assume we haven't, based on the fact that there are none in there. So let's do that, and then let's try that again. There we go. Perfect. Iron nuggets are now available. Let's do one. And two. Fantastic. That's everything for the empty spool right here, which, again, you guessed it, has an EMC value. And then we just needed, what was it, four copper wire, which we make using... The, uh, the rolling machine, which I believe I actually picked up um, a little while back. Did I EMC it? I did not. That means it's probably in here. Totally is. It does have an EMC value, so I will put it in here for future use. I don't think we're going to need 648,000 of them, but you never know. And so uh, we'll throw that down right about there. We will quickly turn down our rotation speed controller here to give us just enough rotational energy to get this to work. And then if we take, um, I think it was copper plates we actually needed for this. So we'll take some copper plates. And let me just check that right. If I drop this in over here, that should get us a, uh, a copper wire. And it totally does. The copper wire itself, unfortunately, no EMC value. And so we are going to have to go ahead and get one more copper plate here. But I think that's basically everything for the Tesla coil. And the Tesla coil does look to have an EMC value. Not that I think we're necessarily going to need too many of these. Uh, over in here, let's see if we can't make ourselves at least three copper. Oh no, we need more of these because we need um, three. I thought we were going to get more than one. That's fine. Let me quickly get way more copper plates. And of course, we can do that by accelerating this a little bit. You can't go crazy with this if you try and accelerate it too much. I'll show you here. If you go too far, it just stops doing it. You'll see at the top there, we're not actually getting any copper sheets, despite the fact that it is going crazy. So you can kind of accelerate it a little bit, but uh, but not too, too much. Chat is right. Uh, the plates here do have an EMC value. I should be uh, throwing those in. Either way, back over here, let's do this, and let's do this. You'll see that does work when you do it a little bit, but if you do it too much, it uh, definitely does break. And then back over in our Arcane Transmutation tablet, can we get two more of these? We totally can. And if we put those in here, here, and here, this craft is now ready to go. All the parts are going to start moving together, and they're going to follow that predetermined path that we put together before. And if it gets to the end and the craft is correct, we get a tester coil. Nice, which of course I'm going to throw into our tablet so that going forward we can get as many tesla coils as we like. Now, these I don't think require any kind of rotational energy, although I could be wrong on that. I'm fairly certain these just require power. And so uh, let me go ahead and pick that up and place it down over here, like that. And uh, I guess ideally, I want that down like that. Perfect, so this has power in it. And looking at JI here, it looks like we just throw a Certus Quartz crystal at the Tesla coil. That's gonna use 10,000 redstone flux and it's gonna give us a charged Certus Quartz. Now to get the regular Certus Quartz here, we need to use maybe Certus Quartz Essence, which we can make using Nether Quartz and Skystone essence so skystone essence we have nether quartz essence we do not have but i assume 
that we can make that happen? We totally can. We just need a block of nether quartz. So let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do, uh, I guess, this and this. Cool. That's going to get us nether quartz essence. We've already got sky stone. We don't really need that much of it because, again, the Surtis Quartz Crystals do have an EMC value. And so let's do you and you. That's going to get us Surtis Quartz Essence. We need eight Surtis Quartz Essence in total. As soon as we have eight, we can go ahead and craft up Surtis Quartz Crystals. And, of course, we can throw those into here. And then, am I doing this right? Do I just throw this? I do not throw this. However, Create is a pretty nifty mod in that if uh, you don't know how something works, you can go ahead and ponder how it works. Oh, I see we play. That makes a lot more sense, given that um, it tried to point down straight away. So we just need another depot which is fine. The depots are EMCable. I don't think I've taught them, but I will go ahead and do this just so that we can grab as many of them as we need going forward. And then let's put this here. Let's put the Tesla coil pointing down at that. And then do we have the ability to get more energy cable? I assume that Isaac of the past was a sensible person who EMC'd this, but it looks like I didn't actually. I will go ahead. I don't think we need this super high tier energy cable for this to work, but given that we have it, I feel like we might as well use it. Let's take a stack of this, and let's connect up the Tesla coil. Nice. And so now it should just be a case of uh, dropping these down on here. And look at that. They're charged. Basically, instantaneously. Nice. And so from there, we can make these Fluix crystals. These are made by combining Nether Quartz, Charged Shutters Quartz, Redstone, and Water in the mixer. There. It's completely fine. Over here, we have our mixer. Our mixer is currently water-free. However, I do believe we can just get water buckets directly out of our tablet now we can indeed so if we just do one of these we can then throw in our charge shutters quartz i'm gonna throw in all five here we'll throw in some redstone again i'll throw in all five uh what else did we need we needed nether quartz and that's it just nether quartz okay perfect nether quartz we have let's take that and we'll throw it all in again five is all we need that's gonna go ahead and mix all that together into some fluids crystals which i'm hoping have an emc value but of course <laughs> they do not that would have been far too easy uh oh we've also managed to get rose quartz there that's because redstone and nether quartz gets rose quartz i think that i might be able to blacklist this using a filter i'm fairly certain there's probably an easier way of doing it than the way that i am about to try and do it uh do we have any string we do we can use string to make wool we can use the wool i believe to make a filter i think any wool will work and then in here, if I do this and I say deny list, if I tick that and I put that on there, I don't know if that actually works. If I try this again, boom, boom, and boom. Is that going to make the item that I want? It is. Nice. Cool. So that's just told this not to make the, um, not to make the rose quartz, which is perfect. And so now with the Fluix crystals, we've got a couple of options. We do need these to progress forward in the pack here, but as we saw earlier, we can also use that to get us the, uh, the Unobtainium because we just need one Fluix Pearl. The Fluix Pearl is four Fluix crystals with four Fluix Dust and an Ender Pearl. And so the Fluix Dust here, we can make by throwing Redstone Dust, Charged Surtis Quartz, and Nether Quartz into actual water. So let me get more Surtis Quartz out of our arcane tablet let's throw all that stack onto here to hopefully nice and quickly get us charged shutter squats again i think that's because we have so much power going in that that's going so fast which is fantastic and then over here if we just throw nether quartz charged shutter squats and redstone that should get us some powder assuming they're all in the right block space which they might not be i do seem to have lost <laughs> the charged shutter squats that only pull I didn't pull one off. I pulled off all of them, right? Um, okay, I'm not quite sure where those have gone. They probably ended up over here. They did. Okay, perfect. Let me try that again. Let's try doing it down here where we have still water. The water's not moving. We'll throw down you, you, and you. And there we go. Flux dust. Nice. Probably don't need that much of it, though. And so now, back up here, we should in theory, be able to get ourselves the uh, the Fluix Pearl, this guy right here. We can. And then from there, I believe we just right-click that onto a Nitro Crystal using our Deployer. So let's take the Nitro Crystal. That's going to go onto the belt, I believe. And then this guy's just going to go up here with this guy here. Kaplunk. 
we get ourselves one ingot worth of unobtainium, and of course the unobtainium is, you guessed it, EMCable. And so, now, just like before, we should be able to take our full set of armor, and then in here, we should be able to just upgrade that to boots, leggings, chest plate, and helmet. And of course, don't forget, sword. Now, looking further forward in the quest here, we do need to get an inscriber from Applied Energistics. That's going to require eight Fluix, which we now no longer have, unfortunately. We can make uh, four here. The Fluix Essence is makeable with Amethyst Essence and Certus Quartz Essence, but I don't know how useful that is outside of just making Cyanide Essence. I don't know if we really need it, and we can't use it to make the crystals anyway. I think really the only way we can make the crystals is with the crafting recipe we just used, but again, it's not a problem, really. Um, that it's basically all free at this point because we have Charged Certus Quartz, we have redstone again basically an infinite amount of it and the same is true for uh, nether quartz as well we have basically an infinite amount of that throw it in grab some water boom and boom and again because we have that blacklist in everything should be fine in terms of getting the fluid crystals that we need and just like with all the other machines we can make this a little bit faster just not crazy fast we will have to keep putting more water in to make it continue going but that's a lot of fluid crystals that we should be able to use to very easily get the inscriber so the inscriber wanted another block like so for both those in here and then inscriber wise do we have what it takes we do nice this also requires power so let's put that down maybe over here and now with the inscriber we can make these printed circuits here there is also an advanced inscriber which i think we should definitely look at getting uh, sooner rather than later for that we need uh, engineering processes but the recipe for the processor is kind of the same for each of these. We've got the printed calculation, the printed engineering, and the printed logic. The calculation is made with the inscriber calculation press. For that, oh, I see, this is where we need some more Certus Quartz Essence, because we need the calculation press, we also need the engineering press, and we need the logic press. And each one of these is made with eight Certus Quartz Essence. We then just need a different item in the middle. So we need 24 Certus Quartz Essence, which means we're going to need, I think, 24 Skystone Essence, which we don't quite have, and 24, I think it was Nether Quartz Essence, which we definitely do have. So let's do this and this. Although you might get two at a time, actually, now that I think about it. And that is the server shutting down. Okay, give me just a second, and we will uh, finish up those crafts. All right, we're back in. And again, thankfully, you do get uh, two Certus Quartz Essence at a time. And so 24 there is actually perfect. So let's see can we get the not you i guess that's kind of right but i don't want to use the essence for it i want to use my transmutation tablet in order to do this for the calculation press we then want to do this for the wait did i just lose those or are they in here i have to search the squats essence no they are in here thank goodness okay back in here let's do this for the engineering press, and then just the logic press, which is the same, but with gold. Nice, okay, cool. So those are gonna be required over with the inscriber. For example, the calculation press, along with a Certus Quartz crystal, should get us the Certus Press. Now, unfortunately, I don't believe this is acceleratable. Whoops, I didn't think that would work. This isn't acceleratable with the pouch. I don't think it's acceleratable at all outside of the uh, acceleration cards, which are right here so we can make these to make this faster and we can also look at getting the advanced inscriber as well which i think is gonna make our lives easier but uh, for now real quick if i grab one diamond out of here and one gold as well because we need gold for the logic and we need diamond for the engineering so let's put engineering and diamond in like so and that's gonna get us the engineering circuit and then that's going to get us the printed engineering circuit. Fantastic. And then logic and gold. That will get us the printed logic circuit. And from there, it looks like we have the option to make three different circuits from FTB industrial contraptions. There's the electronic circuit, there's the advanced circuit, and there's the iridium circuit. And it looks like they kind of all feed into each other. So you need the electronic to make the advanced, I assume. And then you need the advanced to make the iridium. And they've all got some pretty intense create crafts required like you've got to do a couple of cycles with a couple of different items none of the items look particularly difficult though so i don't think any of this should be too tricky and then using that i think our goal here is kind of to work up towards antimatter which is what's required in order to, uh, to progress forward down here with draconic evolution we also do need to get scrap for draconium so draconium does have an emc value but it looks like we have to take a scrap box 
and click it with the Draconium Dust. Draconium Dust, we're going to get through Draconium Essence, which does have an extreme crafting recipe, but it should be fine. So we're going to need to get a lot of Manulin Essence, a lot of Star Metal Essence, and one Insanium. The Insanium we can now get because we do have the uh, TF5 Alter, so that is completely fine. And so once we have one Draconium Ingot, we can EMC the rest. That's not a problem. And uh, for the scrap box, we need the Reprocessor. For the Reprocessor, we need a Macerator. And the Macerator, I think, just requires the one electronic circuit board, which we uh, can probably get fairly easily. We've got to run that six times with LV cable and fuses. Okay, that should be, <laughs> I think, kind of fine. And then that's going to get us into Draconic Evolution, and then we can push forward this way. I think at this point, where are we going with this? We want to try and work towards the Infinity Ingot. The Infinity Ingot here is made using a big old wall of 60 mechanical crafters, and it does require the Draconium Ingot. It also requires just a bunch of other ingots that we've either yet to make or just haven't um, got honors. And I'm not entirely certain, though, what we are doing here. Like, I don't know if we need the uh, Radiance Invulnerability Talisman. I'm not quite sure if that's strictly necessary. I do believe that we need the Chaos Shard, though, if we're going to, uh, to finish the pack. But we'll kind of have to take a look at what it is we need. We do need these Infinity Catalysts, and these require quite a few items. That, uh, that we're going to have to start working our way towards. But for the most part, they're not too bad. A lot of them have EMCs. A lot of them are just um, singularities that we need to dump a lot of other items into. And so that's not too bad. We have hit the max tier altar. I do see that there is a recipe here as part of the uh, Infinity Catalyst, actually. Uh, as part of that, we do need to get antimatter. And so I think that's kind of the whole point of this process. I think we're working through this quest line to get up to that antimatter the antimatter also then looks like it's used in the making of the creative capacitor if that is something that we also want to get which we might do because that might be useful for i was gonna say the chaos dragon but the chaos dragon uh is what you have to fight to get the uh, the the chaos shards and you need the chaos shards in order to get the creative uh capacitor so either way i think that the antimatter is what we're after in order to be able to, uh, to complete the pick although to be fair most of these are gettable now like the end gobber ingots are fine i assume manual we could get if we wanted to tertium is easy enough, so it's Prudentium. We've made uh, the essences for those, getting the ingots. Does require some Draconic Evolution, I see, so we are going to have to work our way through to that uh, Draconic Crafting down here, the Fusion Crafting, to make that happen. But we're not too far away, I don't think, from the end of the pack. We're not super close, but not too far away either. For now, though, unfortunately, we're out of time for this episode of Project Sacrifice. Next time we'll come back, we'll look at working our way through the circuits and trying to get into Draconic Evolution via the Draconium will also probably look at uh, increasing our Power Flower tiers as well, because right now, whilst we are doing pretty well on 600 million EMC, I have a feeling that we're going to need a whole lot more, especially <laughs> if we want to uh, to duplicate the uh, the Chaos Shards. These need 2 billion EMC per Chaos Shard, and so that's uh, probably going to take a little bit of, uh, of EMC to do. For now, though, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this episode of Project Sacrifice there.